uh, does not have a nuclear weapons program at this point, uh, they are, that they have not made a decision uh, to go in that direction. Uh, and uh, therefore, the IAEA, particularly uh, uh, the Director General, who is about to step down, uh, Mohamed al Baradai, has never agreed to publish these, uh, these summaries or this summary of intelligence uh, reports, much to the dismay of s certain Western governments. Now, I was just in Vienna uh, a week or two ago, a week and a half ago, and um, uh, I, I understand that uh, really it's the French who were pushing the hardest for uh, getting the IAEA to publish these reports. It's not clear why France is suddenly taking such a hard line. Uh, I don't think the United States was really that eager uh, to see this uh, pressure on uh, El Baradai and the IAEA, uh, particularly because the Obama administration has not abandoned and, in fact, has reinforced, uh, reaffirmed the 2007 uh, National Intelligence Estimate on Iran's nuclear program. But Germany, on the other hand, has uh, been uh, supporting this pressure on IAEA uh, for political reasons in order to raise the profile of the issue to uh, basically as a scare tactic uh, to make it easier to put pressure on Iran. And this is this is re very interesting in light of, at the same time, the IAEA uh, having their annual meeting of member states and uh, passing a non-binding resolution voicing concern about Israeli nuclear capabilities and urging the IAEA um, uh, to tackle the issue. That's right. This is a, this is a new development. The, um, the Iranians have been able to get uh, more support from the non-aligned movement um, and even from some of the Arab states uh, for such a resolution, which uh, for the first time really puts uh, the Israeli uh, uh, nuclear weapons uh, uh, arsenal in the spotlight and uh, really brings a bit more political balance to the politics of the Iranian nuclear program. Um, and, and I would simply uh, add to that that uh, behind the scenes, there, there has also been uh, uh, continuing political maneuvering uh, over the question of the so-called alleged studies, the, uh, the allegation that Iran was running a covert nuclear weapons research program in the early, uh, from 2001 to 2003. Uh, these are the documents that the United States and other governments uh, have uh, uh, shown to the IAEA but not allowed them to possess. Uh, and which the IAEA has been essentially uh, uh, embracing in its reports over the last couple of years, uh, suggesting that they are credible. But when I sat down with a senior official of the IAEA who refused to be named, uh, it was very clear to me that they have not done uh, due diligence in terms of really trying to ascertain uh, whether these documents are authentic or not. They have not, for example, really quizzed the United States and other governments as to why there are no security markings of any kind on these documents, which the Iranians have pointed out to the IAEA, which, which the IAEA has never publicly acknowledged in its reports. Uh, and so I was uh, quite convinced, and I've uh, since uh, published a couple of reports on this, that the IAEA has no longer maintained a strictly objective, neutral, uh, and uh, uh, impartial stance on this question, but has really tilted toward the Security Council uh, uh, on this issue and has really uh, decided to keep Iran in the dock uh, on behalf of the United States and the other countries in the anti-Iran coalition. Gareth Porter, I want to thank you for being with us, investigative historian, journalist specializing in U.S. national security policy, writes regularly for the Interpress Service. And just to clarify the vote by the IAEA member states, uh, the resolution called for Israel to open its nuclear facilities to U.N. inspection and sign up uh, for the non-proliferation treaty. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. When we come back, we're going to talk net neutrality and also USA Patriot Act. Stay with us.